Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 2 Clear B. Um, we're going to try to power the train car now, so we're going to go to the platform and do that. No, not the fighting platform from Dragon Ball Online. The emergency platform. The one the lady in the intercom keeps talking about. And, uh, yeah, it seems like we're paving our way to the end of the game here. It's the, fi the finale. And I forgot to say welcome to the finale of Let's Play Resident Evil 2 Claire B. <laughs> my bad. I always do that for all my finales. Okay, this is where we gotta use the key. This door here. And, uh, luckily there's no enemies on the way there, so... Oh, what was that? Five minutes until detonation. Yep. Place is gonna blow up in five minutes, so we better hurry. <laughs> Okay, I think you, you could pick up a map over there somewhere, but I'm not going to. We gotta go up here. And... Gotta go over here to pick up these, uh, power plug things. Storage for the high-capacity plugs. Will you open it? Yes. Let's pick up both of them. Make sure you have uh, enough inventory space. <laughs> Excuse me. Pick up there. The joint. We gotta pick up the joint plugs, and we gotta plug them in somewhere to get the power to th for the train car. What was that? Hmm. Okay, uh, go over here. And all you gotta do is use one of them, and it uses both of them at the same time, which is pretty nice. The emergency mode has been activated. The power supply will be cut temporarily. The emergency train will be activated upon restoration of the power. Fair enough. It's kinda creepy the lights went out. Oh, shit. He's back. And, uh, remember the PF Salon reports from a few episodes ago? Well, he is the result of what they wanted to prevent, and I probably should have ran to the right. So yeah, make sure to bring a lot of healing equipment, because this guy is not easy to beat. He is very aggressive. It's almost impossible to get like a hit on him, and he has like wide range attacks. It's kind of like the tyrant from the first game. Okay, he's another one. I'm, I'm playing this. Uh, Conservative, not, not conservatively. Um, I'm playing the safe. Here, use this. Who's that? Who are you? Okay, this is gonna be pretty. I gotta get away from. Him. I gotta get him away from you, right now. so I can pick up that rocket launcher. Okay, so hurry up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Okay, now there's you got something you gotta know about this. Um. When you go to shoot him, you cannot shoot him, like, right close up. Because, uh, he can, I think he can dodge it or something. So you gotta be really careful that you don't... Got ya. You lose, big guy. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on. Just like in the first game. Yeah! Now he says the pile of bones. Okay, perfect timing. Ugh, I remember this battle being like impossible for me, like back in the day. I remember me and my brother, we used to try to uh, beat that guy, we just couldn't beat him. It was so difficult to beat, uh, especially with Leon. Um, he's a lot easier to beat with Claire because of the acid rounds. But if you're trying to kill him with a custom Magnum, like good luck. He's really tough to kill. You got to have like a powerful weapon that doesn't take a while to shoot. But, uh, I, I think I should spoil this right now, but the person who threw the rock, the rocket launcher to me was Ada Wong. I mean, they, don't, they never explain it. It's just obvious. Uh, I remember me and my brother, we had like a theory that that was Laura Croft. Because that was like a rumor that was going on at the time. Um, yeah, I, I can't explain that. Um, like, we think it's Laura Croft. But that's just a cool little rumor that was going on back then, and I'm just having fun with the submachine gun right now. That was fun. Okay, we gotta open the gate here. Device to open the tunnel gates. Leap, turn on the switch. Yes. Okay, 
Okay. Now let's get in the train car and get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, we gotta go to the control room here. Or the, I mean the, uh, what's it called again? The cockpit? Or the, no, no, it's not the call, the cockpit. What's it called? The bridge. The bridge. And yeah, this time, uh, I could show this cutscene without the game bugging and freezing. I didn't have to, like, I didn't have to go on a YouTube video and record it like I did last time. Um, Claire's disc is a little in a little better condition. Yeah, I'm talking to, to this because I already showed this before in my last playthrough. So yeah, except it's a little different now with Claire. I think no. So yeah, we beat the game. It's all done. It's all over. I hope you enjoy this Let's Play of Resident Evil 2 Claire B. This didn't happen last time. What? There's more game. What was that? And yes, this is the reward for beating both scenarios or getting this far. You get to like finish the plot. Biohazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. Uh oh. No! What's wrong with this thing? I don't know. The door won't open. So yeah, we get to finish what happened after the ending cutscene, so that's pretty cool. We get to find out what happened. And this is what we're doing right now. Okay, I want to equip the rocket launcher. For no reason. Let's uh, save our game before uh, anything gets too hairy. I spoke too soon. I wonder who that can be. <sighs> this guy never gives up. He's so persistent. He's like the most persistent endgame boss ever. Or villain in any game I've ever played. He just keeps mutating after you kill him a bunch of times. Never dies. But uh, fortunately, he's not that hard. Because we have a rocket launcher, we still have one rocket left. So uh, after this little cutscene, then we're gonna finish him off for good, hopefully. Come on. Okay, run back to the door, and uh, I think if he gets like too close to you, he will smother you to death or something. I don't know. You could use the acid rounds, but I'll just have fun and fire away at him with the uh, suction gun. Now, it is possible to knife this guy to death. I've seen people do it. It's, it's pretty cool. Pretty easy. Nothing really to it, since we have that rocket. Rocket launcher. And that's the end of him. Well, you notice in the time we had like a two minutes to start in this, after this cutscene? Uh, I think they give you two minutes by default. It doesn't matter how many... how. How close you cut it before the, after you beat the tyrant. So yeah, that's something to note. Let's go through here and uh, try to get to uh, Leon and Sherry. Okay. Warning! Warning! The self-destruct system has been activated. Each train compartment will detonate sequentially. Repeat. Each what? Train compartment will detonate Sherry, 
What are you doing? We have to stop the train, right? I can do Sherry! it. Sherry! Persistent, aren't you? Say well, that again. Come and get it. Right here. Leon! You're both safe. Just die. We've got to get out of here. Move it! Go! <sighs> that was a close one. That was pretty impressive back there, Sherry. It was nothing. I saw someone do that on TV once. Come on. We've got to move out. Now what's the problem? Is something following us? Hey, we still have a job to do. Let's go. Go? Oh, you can't mean... Chris, I have to find you. And that's it. Uh, yeah, I beat the game both scenarios um, a lot of fun uh, we get this awesome uh, song in the credits and uh, yeah so that's basically uh, Resident Evil 2 for you um, I will give my my rating for the game um, after my sc I see my score um, let's just take a couple seconds to uh, a few moments to explain some stuff clear out, and I'll go over some stuff uh, I am not going to do the hunk and tofu um, scenarios. Uh, one, because uh, they're too hard to unlock, and I don't really care to unlock them. Two, even if you manage to unlock both of them, um, they're too hard to beat. Um, I've only ever beaten the hunk scenario uh, without cheating. But the tofu scenario, I cannot do commentary and beat that. I, I can't even beat the, the tofu scenario like without doing commentary, you know, try my best. I I'm not good with the knife. I'll be honest. Um, but maybe in the future, maybe someday, I feel like it's. Uh, I just don't feel like unlocking the scenarios. You gotta beat to unlock the hunk and tofu scenarios. You gotta get like a. You gotta beat Claire's first scenario, then my second scenario, with like a at least a B or an A, and then do vice versa. And you gotta do it on the same memory card, I think. So. That would require me to beat both scenarios in both universes, like Claire A, Leon B, vice versa. And then to beat, to get the uh, Tofu scenario, I think you gotta do that twice. So you gotta beat like a total of four times, or whatever. Um, so, I'm not gonna do that. Um, there is a way to unlock Huck and Tofu on the N64 version. With like uh, a game shark code or something, or actually no, it's a button combination. I believe I could do that. Play it on the N64 version, but on that, uh, maybe in the future. I just don't feel like it's got a lot on my plate right now. Um, but if you guys want to see it, uh, just let me know in the comments. But I'm not going to be doing it anytime soon. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Got that out of the way. Now let's see my score. Claire looks pretty sexy right there. Eh, I got a B. Whatever. Uh, if I hadn't saved 10 times, I probably would have got an A. But uh, it could have been worse. Uh, could have got 11 saves because I actually didn't save at the end of the last episode. I just went the same recording um, just to spare myself, you know, one save. So it was okay. I think I saved on Leon's playthrough like... Ten times too. Oh, and I got the submachine, the unlimited submachine gun. So yeah, that's cool. 
And if you go, if you start a new file, or you know, do a, it, if you do, if you save your game right now, it'll go to Leon's first scenario, and and you can find an unlimited submachine gun in the in the safe or the treasure box, which is nice. So that's nice. <laughs> okay, let's save over this. Yep, Leon A, zero zero, scenario first slash A. Alright, time to get my review of the game. This time, I'm going to split my review up into three categories. The first category being gameplay, second category being difficulty, and the third category being replayability. And then I'm going to give my final score to, uh, based on the three categories. Um, to start off, let's talk about the gameplay. Um, I liked how you know there's a lot of breathing room in this game. Um, you, you can do a lot of puzzles and go to the save rooms in between fighting um, enemies and I mean the enemies aren't that difficult if you you know if you save your ammo and stuff and and that, that's more of a difficulty thing but I'm just saying I like the you know the breathing room like you know there's not like the enemies aren't as aggressive as in like Resident Evil 5 for example you know you're not like fighting off a bunch of waves of enemies every two seconds you know every new area to go to you just fight off a bunch of enemies and you know go go, go off to a puzzle and stuff and so that's nice uh, like see on the screen right here you're not really biting any enemies just you, you just go in this room and like you know it's it's nice so I like that uh, next thing with the gameplay is uh, is the backtracking this is the only problem I have with the game besides you know like dying over something stupid oh and here's the opening intro I, I didn't record it the first episode but but anyway, um, yeah, there is a lot of backtracking in this game. Um, like you find a key on, on one side of the police station, then you go all the way back to the other side to use the key, and then you go back and forth. And and I did a lot of backtracking in this LP. Um, but that's my fault because I messed up a few things. But but th but there really is a lot of backtracking. That's the only thing. And I, and I don't like going to a lot of these areas of the game because they're kind of creepy. Like. You know, you're on the top of the police station, on the top floor, and then you go all the way back to the basement by the dog cages, or... Ugh. Um, yeah, that's... There's there's a lot of backtracking in this game, as opposed to, like, a game like Resident Evil 5. Um, so that's that. Um, so that's pretty much the gameplay. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of nice weapons, you know. It was very creative back then. The, the custom weapons, that's when they first introduced that, you know combine the shotgun parts with your n normal shotgun, you get a super shotgun and same with the magnum and stuff and, and and I like what they did with the grenade rounds for Claire and the bow gun and yeah, there's a lot of uh, a really good arsenal in this game um, but yeah so that's basically it for the gameplay um, for that I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 now off to the uh, difficulty now this is where I'm going to be kind of harsh. Uh, the, the difficulty in this game, it's pretty difficult for someone who's never played a survival horror before or who, anyone new to this game. Um, I mean, it is pretty difficult, you know, when you first play it. But, you know, if you beat it one time, you know, you get used to it. And, I mean, I was I was beating this game better than I, than I am right now when I was, like, s seven years old or eight years old. And, you know, I've I haven't I, I've like lost my groove over the years, but but if someone like me, like an eight year old back then, could beat this game with flying colors, you know, you know that's just kind of weird. Like my I was better than my like fifteen year old brother back then, and you know the game is pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Um, but some of the bosses are pretty difficult, like the 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 tyrants. I think it's called Mr. X, like the this final form. That was really hard, even for me right now. Um, but, um, I think the most difficult thing about this game, besides running out of ammo and being on danger, running through hordes of zombies, besides that, it's the puzzles. Like, they are pretty tedious, um, the first time around, and the really bad thing about the puzzles is, you know, not seeing a key on the floor and having to go all the way back to get it, you know, and being confused running around. That's happened to me a bunch of times, so... It's kind of mixed with the difficulty. It's it's hard in some ways, but it's really easy in others, and it's mostly easy 
if you've beaten the game a few times. Uh, so for the difficulty, I will give it a uh, 7 out of 10. Uh, yeah, 7 out of 10. Um, now for the replayability. Now, y y you know you know the score I'm going to give for this uh, category. I mean, I've I've lost count of how many times I've beaten this game. It had has to be around 30 times at least. Um, I mean, I used to love playing this game. I mean, if, when I when I first played it, uh, I remember I was pl I played the demo version on the Resident Evil Director's Cuts. That doesn't really count as playing the game, but you know, I was really psyched for this game when I first got it. I remember my brother, he uh, he rented it out from this video store by our house, and you know, he you know. That that was after I beat Resident Evil One, you know. So I was a veteran, you know, just like him. So I remember we used to fight over playing it, and and he actually uh, got to the very end of the game before I did, but I actually beat the game before he did. I I think. Um, I remember he got stuck on the the final boss and the Leon A playthrough. He couldn't beat. It. He only had a flamethrower left. That was fun, funny. But uh, but anyway, to the point. Uh, I mean I've. I've replayed this game so many times. Uh, I know it like the back of my hand, even though I messed up some stuff in Claire's second playthrough. Um, that was only because I've never played this game while talking to myself or talking to you guys. So it was kind of a handicap for me. Um, but overall, I mean, if you if you love Resident Evil, if you love survival horror games, this game is so good. I mean, the the atmosphere of this game, the zombie apocalypse. You know, if you love zombies, play this game. You know. Or, just, just get this game on eBay or wherever you want to get it. Play it. Uh, it's it, you'll you'll never put it down. I mean, this and, and the coolest part about the replayability that I should definitely mention is, I mean, you got the two scenarios that fit right together. You beat the first scenario, you go to the the second scenario, depending on which character you played first, and it all ties together. But if you do it vice versa, do Claire first instead of Leon first, then it goes to Leon's second scenario, and you get more more gameplay and it's like a different universe and if you do that like I said earlier if you, if you do if you beat all the scenarios you know vice versa you unlock hunk I, I think but you gotta get like an A I, th I believe or I'm not sure if it um, depends on the score but I do know that you have to beat them all like two times each with like an A um, to get tofu I think correct me if I'm wrong but yeah so I'm, again I'm not gonna do hunk and tofu but anyway for the replayability, I will give this game a. T I'll give the uh, dip the replayability a ten out of ten. Obviously, I I'd, I'd give it eleven out of ten if I could. <laughs> um, oh, and also the, the stuff you can unlock. You know, you get an A. You can get like a, you can get a Gatling gun, submachine gun, uh, a rocket launcher, like the one at the end of the, s the second scenario. Um, yeah. So. Now to give my final score, I'm gonna give the game a ten out of ten. I know I said seven out of ten for like uh, difficulty. I know it kind of doesn't make sense, but I'm giving it a ten out of ten anyway. So that's my score, ten out of ten. Great game, a must buy if you haven't played it yet. I hope you enjoyed this uh, let's play of Resident Evil Two, Claire B, and Leon A. Leon A, Claire B, vice versa. Whatever you want. I've said vice versa so many times now. <laughs> um. When we come back um, to my side LP, it will be Resident Evil 3. But I am going to put the side LP on hold for a while. I've got a lot on my plate. I, I've been LPing Lunar for almost six months now. I'm not even like a quarter of the way through the game. I have to focus on finishing my other LPs. and you know, So Resident Evil 3 is going to be quite a while, quite a wait. So um, sorry. But I will be coming back with Resident Evil 3 in the distant future. But until then, I hope you enjoyed these um, Resident Evil 2. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.